due to popular requests, I decided to get some Bones, Reaper Bones figures and have a look at them. And Reaper Bones are a good option if you're looking for some really, really cheap miniatures for your role-playing games or what have you. They range between $2 and up, depending on the size. Uh, this guy was 2 bucks. This giant ogre was $2.50. Uh, they even have some like huge, I saw Bone Giant, which was like bigger than what I can show you on the screen right now. That was like $15, so very, very cheap. And the reason why it's so cheap is because the material is extremely cheap. Um, this guy in metal would cost you, you know, $20 or so, but only $2.50 in the bones material. And the bones material is very, very soft PVC material, so you can see, very flexible. So that's the biggest issue with it. Uh, to clean it up, you can't sand it because it's too soft. What you basically do is go along the seam lines and push with your knife and try to just cut them away. Sanding's not an option, scraping's not an option. So you have to do it like this. And this material is so soft that, I don't know if I can show it on camera, but I can actually dig into it just using my fingernail. Look, if that comes out, you can see that divot I just put in there. So it's that soft. It's very cheap. Um, some of the some of the figures they have are I would stay away from the like adventures with swords because they're gonna get easily bent. You should be able to put this material back into place by putting the figure into very hot water and then uh, for a few seconds and then holding whatever back in proper position for a minute or so or running it under cool water to try to get it locked back into place. Other than that, I would just stick with larger things that don't have any big bendy parts. But that's all I want to do. Take a quick look uh, and let's get into the painting of this guy. I'm going to cut off the rest of the seam lines here. There's a few spots that I'm going to fill with some liquid putty because trying to cut away all these seam lines is nigh impossible. So those that I can't cut off we're just going to fill in. But let's get to the painting, shall we? All right. We're going to begin the painting on the ogre. Now, here's the trick. I need this guy for my game tomorrow so I can kill my player characters. And it is exactly one minute to midnight. And so I need to paint this as fast as possible. So people ask me how long it takes to paint a miniature. We're going to find out. Go. So first thing we're starting off with is, well, the flesh, obviously. And that's Han's figure I painted a couple days ago, a couple or a week ago. He had sort of a grayish tone to his skin, which I think would be appropriate for Ogre, this Ogre. Um, I was going to do a review of it, but I decided not to because it's just not my subject really of the uh, new monster manual that just came out for D&D. Terrible artwork in it. Oh boy. Um, I used to buy monster manuals just for the artwork for ideas for paint schemes, but it's just a lot of the artwork in there are so bad. But the, my point is that they actually don't even give you a description of what color ogres are in there or a lot of the creatures. You just have to go by the awful drawings and artwork. I think they were. A slight yellow hue to them, I really can't remember. But, um, or maybe they were pinkish, I don't know. But anyway, I uh, looked online real quick and found some various ogre pictures, and that's what gave me the idea of doing this slight gray hue for this guy. But we're starting with flat brown. Because it does have a little red into it. I don't want to go super gray, so it's just going to be slightly off a human skin tone. That done, next we are moving on to cork brown. And I'll use brown sand on the uh, Hans guy, but just mixing it up because if it doesn't work out, I mean, well, it's an ogre, it's not a human, so I don't have any real reference that I'm following. 
it is quite possible the colors just won't match up and I will have to redo it in that case you won't see any of this video so oh well leaving the previous what was that flap around yes flap around in the recesses working our way up This is taking a lot longer than I would like just because it's such a large figure and flesh covers such a large area. I'm hoping this thing will speed up once I get done with the flesh. Currently at 16 minutes. But added another big dollop of the cork brown to the previous mixture. And as usual, starting to work on a smaller area. This figure, I had a train of thought, I lost it. Oh, uh, this figure, um, because of all the oversized muscles, I mean, we're going to have some really dramatic highlights on them. And as to the material, the bones material, theoretically, once you prime, a miniature it shouldn't matter what the material is however in the past I have noticed some differences sometimes the difference between painting styrene and metal I have noticed even through the primer um, the the more slick nature of the plastic does tend to affect the paint I'm not sure exactly how I guess you know if the surface is smoother, then the primer is going to be smoother. But as far as the bones material goes, not really noticing any huge difference here. I mean, I call it similar to plastic, but not really having any issues at all. I should be using straight cork brown right now, however, it was a bit too stark. That previous layer that I just did was too dark. So this is almost straight cork brown with a little bit of the previous mixture in it. Which is totally fine. I mean, it's a mistake, but I can adjust from it. As I highlight, I'll just highlight with this mixture rather than straight cork brown. But as you can see, the muscles are a good example here. We're applying the base coat, so the previous shade layer leaving on the bottom of each of these muscles other than that, covering the whole muscle, especially the top areas. And we're at 24 minutes. I don't think I'm going to finish this in two hours. Moving on to the highlights now, and I got cork brown mixed with a little bit of Panzer Ace Highlight Flesh and a little bit of Stonewall Gray. Because I don't want it too bink. bink. I want it too pink. Decided to keep it more, well, gray. Not too gray though. If I had too much gray, it's gonna start looking weird because I got no gray in my base coat. Kinda making things up as I go along here. Another highlight. Those same two colors mixed in. Let me thin this out a little more, it's a bit too stark. And as I said previously, in virtually every single video I do, you can see much smaller and smaller area as the highlights go further and further up the range. And so each layer goes on much quicker. It's all right, it's all right. For the final highlight, adding just the highlights flesh and making this one really precise, just dotting it where necessary. Didn't come out as gray as I thought it would. Maybe I should have tried the brown sand, but it's okay. I'm not dissatisfied with it. I 
think I got one more thing I'm going to do with the flesh and then we can move on. For a little extra detail, mixed in some purple. It's my base color and applying a little bit to the lips. I'm doing some to the eye sockets right now, but I'm going to go for a deeper purple in there eventually. Little touches like this, changing the color of the flesh here and there, really uh, adds an extra little bit of uh, spice to your miniatures. This is going to be a very little bit of detail actually. And we'll just highlight it up. The highlight color that I already used. deeper in the eye sockets. I think we'll do a quick wash on this and then move on to something else. The purple I decided to use around the mouth gave me an idea to uh, try adding a little bit of purple. There's a little purple shade to the rest of the miniature. Give it a nice interesting look. So using a mix of violet and sepia ink, just applying it into the recesses for the moment. May do a little bit more of a glaze once this is dry and I see how it looks. But again, adding an extra little hue color, in this case the purple, you know, it just adds an extra little something to it when you add a unusual color to some color not normally associated with it, in this case purple and brown. I think I'm going to do this one more time with a bit more purple added. This is still a bit close to the brown range, so more purple in the wash and more spot washed into the recesses. But I think at this point we're going to move on to the rest of the figure. Starting on his hairy body, or the hair on his body, excuse me. And I can do his beard now while I have the color here. But what I have is a mix of flat brown, which I use for the shade, um, the cork brown, which I use for the skin and some Parasite Brown, which is the orange I eventually want to put on here. I thought he had some more hair on him. I may have painted over and lost it now. Oh, his feet, that's what I need to do. But I'm trying to do a color similar to match the flesh right now, so it blends in because it's gonna be, you know, slightly transparent because it's not fur, it's hair and kind of stippling it on so I get some of the some of the skin color through where was it? We'll put a little on the back of his hands too and then once this is on I could switch to the straight Parasite Brown and start really adding some color Now I got the straight Parasite Brown and stippling that on. I'm going to end up having to put a wash on this to blend it in better. Oops. A little too much moisture on the brush. Just turn it into a wash. Come on, come up. And then we'll add a little bit of highlights to this. Beard, actually, I'm going to have to go back and, you know, I'm going to do that in a darker brown and then do that in the Parasite Brown, paint it different than what I'm using here. Because I do want that to stand out more than the hair on his legs and hands. Moving on very quickly here, just added some beige, the Parasite Brown, once again a few little stipples. We're almost up to an hour painting this thing. 
And it's not looking that great right now. It's a bit messy, to be honest. I'm hoping kind of I can pull it through with in the end. But right now, if I didn't need this by tomorrow, I would stop and repaint the whole thing. Last thing to do for the hairy legs, little fairly thin glaze wash of sepia to help blend it in a bit. And that's gonna be it. The beard, I'm gonna undercoat in camo black brown, and then we'll paint it the exact same way with the parasite brown up to the beige. But the black brown will give it a bit more contrast where it meets the skin. All right, on to the pants. Doing black red here. Red, obvious choice, because I already did orange on the hair. So why the hell not do red? Got to get going here. Go, 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 go. Then after that, doing the straight red, the 926 red. And then to this, we'll mix in just a little bit of flat red for the edges. You've seen this before. I've done this red a couple times already. Nothing new here. 